Well, it's March 31st. Nope, corrected. It's March 30th. I even checked before I turned this video on. <laughs> yeah. We are um, scheduled to plant out this garden behind me in two days on Saturday. Because it's going to be all hands on deck project. The problem is, even though the weather is supposed to be really nice, it's supposed to rain all day. Well, all day tomorrow for sure. And like on and off on Friday or Saturday, which is such a disappointment, such a disappointment because we've been like plotting out this day to get all this stuff in the ground. Now, of course, today it's beautiful out here, but my potatoes aren't ready. I haven't um, chitted them. They haven't dried out or had the time to dry out. Uh, my husband's not here. He was uh, going to be here to help do a lot of the heavy lifting and digging. But I can't stand it. I can't stand that I have this lovely weather and I can't be in the garden. So I am going to, I'm going to start digging. And I actually have some potatoes that I am not chitting this year uh, because they were leftovers from last year that have really sprouted and they just need to be in the ground. Um, and I'm just not sure how well they will do if I chit them. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to do a little experiment and I'm just going to plant them as is in the ground. And while I have a couple hours here with the sunshine, I'm just going to get it started <laughs> and then we'll see what the next two days hold. Hopefully, you know, on Saturday when the weather's kind of off and on, maybe we can come out when the rain's not too bad and get some things in the ground because I feel like if I wait too much longer, I'm going to be really missing that window of opportunity here in Southwest Michigan. We have such a short spring. It's like, it goes from really, sorry, hair in my mouth. It goes from really wet and cold to all of a sudden really nice and warm. And so for plants like broccolis and spinaches and cilantros, those things want to bolt really quick. Now I've tried to give them a really good head start inside with that in mind. And my plan may fail and I may just decide that those plants need to just be grown in the fall only. But I'm going to try it. But part of that is getting those dadgum plants out in the ground right now. <laughs> so. I'm just gonna give it a go. I'm gonna come out here and just get a little bit of digging in before dinner. I don't, I don't presume I'm gonna get very much done, but darn it, I know you know how I feel when you just wanna get out in the ground on these beautiful sunny days in early spring and get some gardening in. I'm tired of being in that house, you know what I'm saying? So let's see what we can get done. Okay, so these are my potatoes, some of them, left over from last year that sprouted in my basement. Uh, most of my potatoes did really well, uh, but there was one particular uh, variety that sprouted like crazy and I wasn't even able to reuse uh, seed potatoes because of how long their tentacles were. Uh, but these did pretty good. These are This is actually like a perfect seed potato right here. Now these are a little long, but I'm going to give it a go just to see what happens. These are really long, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I kind of want to try it just to see what happens. Um, but for these for sure, I'm going to go through these real quick and I'm going to pick out the ones that are a little bit more doable and then I'll save the longer ones for if I have extra room. So that's kind of cool. I can use my potatoes from last year, right? Um, instead of having to go buy them. Now I did buy some as well, um, just to make sure that we had enough, but it was fun to kind of go through these and see which ones I could still use from this year. Now my plan is this soil is really nice and loose, which is way different than it was last year when we moved in and broke ground here. Uh, just because I've had the chickens in here, we had plants in here last year, this was my squash and um, mainly my squash and some pumpkins uh, that I had here and now I'm doing potatoes. And uh, anyway, so it's really easy to dig the soil down and I'm just gonna cover them about six inches under the ground and then I'm gonna go over about six inches and then stagger another row and that'll be my potato row from here all the way down. So let's see what we can get in the ground. <laughs> Alright, 
So I've got, these are all the seed potatoes from last year and they look great. I'm actually really, really happy with how good these look. I think they're going to be really great plants. Um, so I've got all of these in the ground and then you'll see right here where we go from like reasonable stems um, to much longer. Now these are probably a foot or more, foot or less. Um, and they may do nothing, but I really just kind of wanted to experiment instead of just throwing them out. So I've got like mm, 10 of these with the long stems. And I did read somewhere that you, if you have something like this, you can lay them down sort of horizontal with the tops coming up to reach out and then I'll cover them up and we'll just see what they do. Um, if they don't do anything, it's not a huge loss and I'm going to be staggering potatoes uh, next to him here. So I still think I'll get a good harvest, but I just hated to throw them out. And I just want to know, I just want to know if I can use potatoes like this, if this happens in the future. So again, so I, again, I've got these about six to eight inches apart. I'm going to go ahead and cover these up and then uh, I will do my next row about eight inches to a foot over and I'll just stagger it. Now, if you watched my video, uh, what, what I'll do differently next year that I did at the end of the season last year, I mentioned not planting potatoes near the fence line. <laughs> and it looks like I'm doing that, doesn't it? Well, I, those were sweet potatoes that were incredibly hard to get out of the ground. These potatoes and the ones that I planted, and it's basically the same soil over there, were super easy just to pull up by hand. We had to do a little bit of digging, but that digging that we did did not like hurt the potato. Any digging we did with our sweet potatoes either split them, broke them in half, made it really difficult to get out of the ground. And that was the reasoning behind me saying, I am not planting, planting potatoes near a fence again. These I have about four or five, maybe even six inches away from the fence. And just for what I know of the growth habits of these kind of potatoes, I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue. It might be, but our fence line is not buried under the ground. So we could reasonably dig if we needed to, to get them out. Um, but the reason that I'm putting here them on the fence line like this is kind of for this reason. They're gonna provide a really nice barrier of foliage for the rest of the garden. And if I have any little bunny friends that wanna come in here and eat, I didn't wanna plant the really super tasty greens here on the edges. Um, I wanted to plant something that was maybe not as enticing to chickens that get out or ducks that are roaming around or rabbits that are around. So I know that for the most part, potato leaves, unlike sweet potato leaves, are not really edible and most animals don't like to eat them. So my thinking of putting them here as a barrier to animals trying to get in or animals on the exterior trying to eat what's there. We'll see, right? Experiment. Experience is sort of the teacher. Failure is also a teacher and maybe success. We'll see. Um, so I'm gonna plant those potatoes there and then on the outside of that row is where I'm gonna put my cabbages because potatoes and brassicas do really well together. So I'm thinking cabbages. I did that last year and it worked really well and it was really pretty. And when I harvested the cabbages and the potatoes, it didn't seem to disrupt the other. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then uh, I will have my row here or my pathway here. And then in this bed, I'm going to do um, onions and more of my brassicas, cauliflowers and or broccoli, just depending on spacing when I get out here we'll see if all of this is cauliflower because I do have a lot or if all of this is broccoli or both but I'm going to be interplanting them with onions and I think the way that I'm going to do it because I've been thinking about it um, is I'm going to do a group of like I think six we'll say six brassicas and then a square of onions so probably in my head I'm thinking uh, 12 onions maybe like a good amount of onions maybe even more than that and then I'm gonna do more brassicas and more onions and more brassicas and more onions. And the reason I'm doing that sort of block intercropping is because number one, they pair well together. Number well, number two, the scent of the onions is going to help repel cabbage moths and other caterpillars that like to eat brassicas. And I'm also gonna throw in some dill in there as well, because dill is a really good aromatic herb to plant with your brassicas to help um, deter those pests that are trying to find those brassicas, they'll get thrown off by the scent of the onions and the aromatic herbs like dill, rosemary, and sage. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to do the brassicas, onions, some dill, brassicas, onions, some dill, 
all the way down. And I do think this whole row will end up being that pattern. And then over here on this half is where I believe I'll be doing like carrots, uh, radishes, lettuces. That's actually a really great pairing. Carrots, radish, and lettuce. They improve each other's flavor and their growth habits are different enough that they can grow well together. You have a small radish under the ground that's gonna be harvested in 25 to 35 days. You've got the longer growing carrot that is also growing under the ground. But by the time you pull the radish, it's gonna give the carrot room to mature. And then of course you've got the shallow rooted lettuces um, that are growing above the ground. So they uh, do well together. So I will definitely have a bed of, I believe carrots, radishes and lettuces. And I'll keep you updated on what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover up these potatoes and call it a night. And then hopefully <laughs> during the next day or two, we'll get the rest of the potatoes and hopefully the onions planted and we'll see if we're able to get the brassicas in the ground. So we're getting there. It will happen. It's just patience, right? Oh, patience as a gardener is so hard. Um, so I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.